Internet. On brands that build India this week, we take a look at a brand that every urban Indian man knows and perhaps owns. After all, no man could feel complete without it. I do like it because uh, it has a sense of masculinity to it and it makes us uh, feel more complete, so to speak. I work in a professional environment, so the brand makes sense to me. First thing that comes to my mind is the quality and uh, the complete man. When you come to Raymond, you know that the product has been exclusively designed for you. If I have to make a custom-made suit, I would go to Raymond's because you see what happens is Raymond's is embedded in everybody's mind. The Raymond brand dates all the way back to 1925 when a small woolen mill called Raymond Woolen Mills was set up in Thane near Mumbai. It initially manufactured low-priced blankets before it gradually moved to the top quality fabrics market. Today, some of the more exclusive Raymond suits run into lakhs of rupees. For its loyal customers, it's a small price to pay to feel like the complete man. Raymond saw its first change post-independence. Instead of manufacturing lowly priced blankets, the company brought in the latest technology and automation in the 50s and 60s and started concentrating on fabrics. Soon after, the company received import orders and started exporting fabrics. With increasing demand for worsted woolen fabrics, the company started manufacturing facilities in Jalgaon as well. Since then, manufacturing facilities have been set up in Chindwara and Kolapur. Somewhere in the mid-60s, uh, my uncle then decided that we should make suits and suitings in this country, which is something unheard of. It was reserved for England to do. And once we were in the suiting space, we actually make the best fabrics in the world. A proposition is to give the consumer the best fabric there is at every price point. While the premium worsted woolen fabric collection remains the mainstay of the Raymond brand, the company realized that the category was seeing growing need for ready-to-wear as the customer base expanded. So the company also launched other brands like Park Avenue for executive wear, Parks for outdoor wear and acquired the men's smart casual wear brand Color Plus. Meanwhile, Raymond remained the premium fabric collection and in 2008 entered the ready-to-wear segment as well. There are two kinds of fundamental clothing segments in this market. One is where you buy a fabric, go to a tailor and get it stitched. In that segment, when it comes to trousering and uh, suiting fabric, Raymond is by far the undisputed leader with over 70% of the market share. Uh, the rest of the 30% is so fragmented across multiple organized as well as unorganized brands uh, and spread across the country. The second clothing segment is really ready to wear. Ready to wear is a highly fragmented and hyper intensive, competitively intensive market where no brand has a share of more than one and a half or two percent. Men uh, are exposed to what's going on around the world and their mind frame is changing and I think that Today, everybody is more uh, needy and choosy about what color they want to put on, what kind of fit they want to put on. Uh, they want something for a different occasion. They don't want one suit and wear it for anything like they used to do in the past. In the complete range of fabrics that Raymond offers, it also comes out with limited editions of their finest fabrics, sub-branded as the Chairman's Collection. An individual suit costs upward of 5 lakhs and still finds buyers. The 1.5 million members of the Raymond Premium Circle, a customer loyalty initiative of the brand, are targeted with direct marketing. The idea is to compete with the super premium international brands. Chairman's collection is quite a large collection. It continues to grow because it's got suiting, trousering, shirting, everything comes under that. But at the top end of Super 250s, we do only 60 suit lengths uh, in a year or a year and a half as, as the wool comes. But... That's really a statement to show that we make the best in the world. And if there's a discerning customer who wants the best in the world, then he goes for the 250s. If you take out the label from some of the brands and you just put them in a shop, they all look, they all look the same to me. So what uh, we want to do at Raymond's is that we want to bring the brand to a premium level. And honestly, I, I believe you want to compete also with international luxury brands, not only with Indian brands. I think we can go one step ahead of everybody else. So that is our goal right now. In the suiting category, one of the biggest contributors to building loyal customers and sales is of course the retail experience. 
Raymond started retail outlets close to 50 years ago. Most of these outlets are one-stop shops offering a range of products and services including custom fit tailoring services. Raymond is now experimenting with a new retail concept, the Raymond Style Store. On display, there is only one piece of all collections and customers find their preferred collection in the size they want, waiting for them in the fitting room. If you typically go to a similar size store as we are standing here today, uh, from any other brand, you can show 15 or 20 suits. Here I can show 70 suits by this kind of a, uh, merchandising and this kind of a retail design. Besides the quality of its product and services, there is no doubt about what has helped Raymond become such an iconic brand. It's consistent and perfectly positioned advertising. Through the 70s and 80s, the advertising was by Frank Simo's advertising. He came up with the style guide to the well-dressed man. In the early 90s, as the Indian economy opened up, a suit was no longer only for ceremonial purposes and was more within the reach of the upwardly mobile man. And that was when Rajiv Agarwal's Nexus Equity also took over the account. We observed that all suiting advertising was good-looking, hunky guys uh, in smart clothes, surrounded by one or more women, uh, palatial houses and hotels, snazzy cars, really two-dimensional cardboard cutouts of real people. We created a sort of... Uh, persona of the complete man. We actually wrote it down and we said this is what the complete man is and anything that we do and all the advertising must be judged against that. Uh, does this fit the, if you will, the identity that we made of the complete man? I think the big contribution that Rajiv and team made was in the evolving India of early 90s where rapidly things were changing. Western brands were coming in, retail was uh, evolving extremely rapidly, uh, media was exploding, whether it was internet, whether it's television channels there. Customer had a one-touch access to the global expression of fashion. In that dynamic environment, to strike a balance of a brand in the changing expectations with strongly rooted Indian values, I think that expression of complete man is what Rajiv really contributed to the brand, which is a timeless expression because it just keeps evolving with time. It took us a little while to understand that there's something very big sitting here. And as we developed it over the years, uh, it became a fabulous aspirational brand. It became something huge in what it is today. After Nexus Equity, the account went to RK Swami BBDO. Usually, when an agency is changed, the earlier brand position and campaign puller gets thrown out of the window. But in this case, the complete man idea remained with only a minor tweak. Competitors to Raymond like Reed and Taylor and CR Arms have used celebrity endorsers in the past. But for Raymond, it's the uncommon complete man who has been the endorser. Many things make the complete man. Being there is just one of them. Raymond, the complete man. Recently, it changed agencies yet again. The complete man remains the backbone of the advertising, though the latest TVC showcases the colors of wool. People are not only emotional, they want to see a rational side. So we're balancing it out with the big main complete man campaign and some product specific innovative communica communication but at the same time we're doing lots of new media and innovative and events and lots of other things and figuring it out what other thing we can do that this brand can be tangible people can touch this brand tangibly oh, Raymond has brand extensions in the grooming segment, though these have been relatively less advertised. Park Avenue Storm. Smell like wow. That just worked. Advertising for its other brands like Park Avenue and Color Plus have always been good and effective, though nowhere as iconic as Raymond. Park Avenue. A step ahead. 
A consistent message and a focused campaign have helped make Raymond a very complete brand. It is time for us to get into a break, but when we return, we'll be talking to Santosh Desai of Future Brands. That's coming up in just a bit. As to the over-the-top advertising, given that it's Raymond's, there is a brand of a certain kind which is so much about refinement and, and graciousness and the rest of it. And here you have something, so it, they're, they're the mind boggles. I mean, I have no explanation for that whatsoever. <laughs> On brands that build India, we're looking at the making of a complete man, or rather a brand that promises to deliver on that. Joining me now is Santosh Desai of Future Brand. Santosh, it's good to have you back on the show. Let me start by asking you, would you say that Raymond's advertising has been one of the most consistent and focused campaigns that you've seen in the last 20 odd years? In the last few years, I, I, I do feel that the, the advertising had tended to become much more focused on the more material aspects. It was also a little you know, paternalistic and, and overly sort of coded in a way that I thought was a, was a little sexist. But if you look at the, the, the new campaign that has come, I think that's an again an excellent kind of a return to the idea of that, that, that success is about a mindset. And the whole notion of the complete man was that the complete man was much more than just the fact that, you know, you drove a big car or you had a lot of money. Uh, but the fact that you actually, in this case, look, you know, have a relationship, for instance, in marriage, that, that is a contemporary kind of a, a relationship. I think that contemporariness of, of Raymond's is back. So would it be fair to say that it stood out from its competitors? It's actually built a brand with a very clear position, unlike competitors who maybe had high decibel advertising, but not necessarily captured a clear position in the marketplace. Overall, I would say that there is no comparison really between Raymond's and its com competition in terms of of the kind of appeal that the brand has and the advertising that and the way in which advertising has contributed to it. I think Raymond's uh, and one must acknowledge that what has happened in the last few years uh, is the fact that you know the ready mates have come in and and the whole notion of of suitings and textiles uh, has changed. And in spite of this, you find that Raymond's is a brand that has that has you know because of its brand strength. And because Raymond's was always a cut above uh, its com competitors, regardless of what they did and how much money they spent. So, yes, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The big picture story is very clearly that Raymond's is an exceptionally successful uh, sort of a case study of a brand success. All right, Santosh, before we go any further, let's take a look at the recall some of the typical customers have for Raymond and other suit brands. I remember the one in which the principal is retiring. And all the school children run up to him and they have those placards in hand. Actually, I just remember one that is the recent ad where uh, the mother keeps going back uh, and then eventually we realize that, you know, she's gone back to the kids. So I think it really shows that uh, no matter how expensive clothes you wear, this still the ad was connecting to the normal people with normal lives. The one ad that always comes to my mind is uh, the complete man ad wherein the bride is the is wearing the red sari and the guy is wearing the navy blue suit and uh, she's touching the suit and uh, she's in, and, and the line says the complete man let me talk to you about brand extensions for Raymond Santosh because that hasn't been well advertised you've got aftershaves deodorants etc do you think that it was a deliberate and wise decision especially because they've had some of the top advertising for other brand extensions like the Park Avenue beer shampoo some of them like you mentioned the beer uh, shampoo are are frankly baffling I mean they I mean there's really no way to explain it as to the over the top advertising given that it's Raymond's there is a brand of a certain kind which is so much about refinement and, and graciousness and the rest of it. And here you have something. So, it, they're, they're the mind boggles. I mean, I have no explanation for that whatsoever. Yeah! Cheers to man hair! Uh, the other ones, again, I think they, uh, the, the, there is a danger then, you know, of the brand getting stretched a little thin. It's a powerful brand. And I think it's important for extensions to pay... Uh, and be respectful of the brands uh, of, of Raymond's as, even as they, they sort of extend it. And I think sometimes uh, perhaps that, that respect and that understanding of the, of the brand, uh, of the master brand has been uh, a little uh, bounding. Well, Santosh, as always, thanks very much for dropping in and sharing your insights on the brand. It's time now for us to take a short break. But when we return, we'll see how Raymond is stitching together a better tomorrow. We've taken up an initiative of training 25,000 tailors 
and they get a small diploma type of course with us and a degree but that it helps them to go out into the world and earn 5,000 rupees a month. Welcome back. You're watching Brands That Build India. And this week, we talk about a brand that claims to help make a complete man. The brand is staying true to its promise, even with its CSR initiatives, helping disadvantaged sections of society live complete lives. The group company runs three Singhania schools in Vapi, Thane and Chindwara. These schools were originally set up for mill workers' children. Today, too, they are highly subsidized, offering the most elite facilities for all children. We do have a, a need-based and merit-based scholarship. And uh, we also entreat students who have taken to sports but who cannot afford it. Because sport, uh, training in sports is very expensive. We take in children from all walks of life. It's a very inclusive school. I have children who have got autism. And uh, I have children who have got cerebral palsy. But each one of them is just like any other child in the school. The other CSR initiative jointly undertaken with the Government of India is a more obvious brand fit. Called the Raymond Tailoring Initiative, it trains unemployed youth, women and members of the minority community in the art of tailoring. Raymond plans to launch 20 more centres across the country in the next five years in a phased manner. We've taken up an initiative of training 25,000 tailors and they get a small diploma type of course with us and a degree but that it helps them to go out into the world and earn 5,000 rupees a month. So we impart skills really, it's like a vocational rehab type of place. But we do it in our space and, and we hope that these tailors then go and join good tailoring outfits which are fabric consumption, stitching can get addressed. At the Raymond Rehabilitation Centre, young men and women are given short-term vocational courses. These courses offer basic training in electrical, air conditioning and refrigeration repair, plumbing, etc. When they get a certificate, they also get a toolkit and uh, we place them in a job. So at the end of a four-month session, they actually have a job worth 8,000 bucks. And I think that's a beautiful thing to reach out to so many families. So instead of them turning around and uh, looking blankly into space and loitering around and whiling away their time, I think we have put their time to good use and we've made good citizens out of them. A much needed initiative to help increase employability of the youth. With that, it's a wrap on this week's edition of Brands That Build India. We do hope you enjoyed watching the show. Do tune in same time next week for another fascinating brand story. Till then, from all of us here, goodbye and many thanks for watching.